All right, let's get started. Good morning and welcome to today's Tuesday Markets Outlook webinar. My name is Prakash Vijayana. I'm a senior analyst here at Options Play. And today I'm going to be walking you through how I am viewing the current markets. So quick disclaimer, the types of securities, forms and research tools used in this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation for Options Play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. This video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal, or investment planning advice. Okay, so our agenda for today, as usual, kicking off with the major equity indices, highlighting some key levels, and we are seeing some very bullish price action here to kick off earnings season. So uh, positive news all around for equities, um, definitely in a more risk-on environment. From there, we'll be moving on to fixed income and commodities. We'll take a look at the sector rotational model, highlighting which sectors are outperforming and underperforming the overall market. We'll take a look at some subsectors of interest that I have for you today, and we'll end today's webinar with some bullish and bearish market observations. No new ideas for today because last week we had quite a few new ideas, so I just want to work off of them and give you an update on those how those are performing. So. S&P 500, looking at the SPY ETF, and you can see that bullish price action. Um, it really, ever since last week when we had the kickoff for earnings season with the major banks um, announcing earnings, so far, very positive. So this week is always a big week for um, the entire earnings season, the first week, because it's usually the big banks, and it kind of sets a tone for the rest of the earnings season. The next big week is obviously the big tech earnings. We tend to have Amazon, Google, Apple, and Microsoft uh, grouped together and announcing earnings within a few days of each other. And that is that also causes a lot of volatility. But until we get there, you know, for now, we are seeing that um, equities are reacting very positively to these um, earnings announcements. And the S&P 500 approaching a major resistance level at around the 455, 460 area. Um, not all-time high level, but very close to it. And it's approaching that with some decent momentum. You can see momentum still rising here on the weekly time frame. Not yet technically overbought. Uh, the 50-period CCI is still below the 200 area. So that is not overbought yet, but very close to it. Um, but overall, you know, with earnings, that usually acts as a nice upside or downside catalyst. Um, and we tend to see momentum swing either one way or the other. So... Price approaching 460 or 455 to 460, that will be the next resistance level to be looking out for. We could see a stall there um, and maybe more neutral price action heading into big tech earnings. But big tech earnings, they outperform while we could we could be visiting this all time high level back at 480 very soon. So equity is definitely in a more risk on sentiment, uh, pricing in a more dovish Fed, even though we know that the next. Um, interest rates, uh, sorry, the next Fed meeting will likely be a hike of 25 points for interest rates. We, we've we already priced it in. Big markets have priced it in, and they've priced it in a long time ago. Right now, markets are looking even more into the future and looking at the possibility of the Fed cutting rates sooner than expected. A big reason for that is due to the fact that labor inflation is coming down. Uh, quite drastically, so uh, better than expectations at least, and that is why not markets are pricing in a more dovish Fed in the months to come and heading towards 2024. So Nasdaq 100, looking at the QQQ ETF, so we can see yeah, again similar price action. We know we, we had a big move here back to 370 and a bit of a retracement, um, some neutral price action um, in anticipation of earnings season kicking off. And since then, we've had bullish price action, a breakout above this uh, consolidation level. And price is now at a resistance level at the, the low 380. So this is a previous swing level um, on the weekly time frame, provided resistance and support. But it looks like price is going to be breaking above it as well. There's plenty of momentum heading into it. And on the daily time frame, momentum has recovered from that overbought condition and is now starting to continue higher here. So it does look... Um, from a technical perspective, at least, it looks very good for the NASDAQ 100. Revisiting that all-time high level at around 400, about 410, really. Um, and that could be happening quite soon, especially with big tech earnings. You know, the NASDAQ 100 will have a lot more exposure to that. So if big tech outperforms, 
I do expect that 400 level to be reached very, very quickly here for the queues. In terms of pullback zones, if we do get uh, highly unlikely, in my opinion, because we are in such a risk on sentiment um, and we're not overbought on the daily time frame. But if you do get a pullback, you know, potential pullbacks could come down to 370, uh, the previous resistance level turning support. But again, uh, no bearish price action that we are currently seeing that is indicate, indicative of a um, pullback here for the NASDAQ 100. Okay, taking a look at IWM, which is a Russell 2000 ETF. Uh, so we're looking at small caps here, and we have seen a lot of action here, here in the last few days. So since we last spoke, price was at around 188. We saw we saw it approach 188 with a lot of momentum. And that is why I did mention last week that we could potentially see a breakout above 188, which is a major resistance level. You know, it's a 38.2 fib level. And price, you can see how often it has respected that area in the last 12 months. But last few days, we have seen a breakout and not too much for pullback, but a bit of a pullback uh, to, uh, on Friday, followed by a very bullish move on uh, yesterday. And it does look like we could, we're going to see a continuation of this rally with the next key level being at 200. So 200, a uh, strong psychological level and a previous swing level on the weekly time frame. So it is a level that we have to pay a lot of attention to. But beyond that, I'm looking at 210, 23.6 for level. Major area of support for pretty much an entire year in, during 2021. And also acted as resistance during the bear market. So we can see small caps are definitely getting back into the picture. And that's also due to the fact that we are in a more risk on environment here. Moving on to TLT, the Treasury Bond ETF. So TLT looking like, you know, was going to potentially break down below the 99 area, but found support once again at this major support level on the daily time frame. We saw a big impulse move in the last few days, followed by a limited pullback and a gap up higher this morning. So that does indicate a revisit back to 104 resistance is going to be on the cards in the next few days. But if it get a breakout above this 104 level, 108 would be the next key area to be looking at, another major area of resistance. The TLT, you know, definitely looking a lot better than it was um, just a couple of weeks back where we saw a lot of bearish momentum heading into a, a major support level, which would have indicated that it was, there was, you know, high potential for a breakdown of that support level, but that support level has remained intact. So TLT, uh, definitely looking a little bit more bullish. 104 and 108 are your two key levels to be looking at. As a trading opportunity, I'd probably wait for breakout above 104 to look for a move to 108. Um, or, you know, if you want to go really short term, you, you could place a trade now for targeting what that 104 level. It's just that because that 104 level has provided resistance in the past, we could see it provide that resistance again. So there's not that much upside um, from where price currently is, where the opportunity I really see is a breakout above 104. Moving on to the US dollar, and the US dollar has declined quite rapidly back below that $100 level. So, you know, we haven't seen that this price since early 2022. So early to mid 2022. Um, and breaking again below this major level of support at 101. Now, this has to do with the fact that, again, markets are pricing in a more dovish Fed than originally anticipated. That is why we are seeing so much momentum to the downside. Price is a little bit oversold on the daily time frame. And we are seeing some consolidation in the last few days. We could see that continue because of this oversold condition. Um, if we do get some bullish price action, it could be up. It would be most likely limited to the 101 area, previous support turning resistance. Overall, though, the thesis here for the US dollar is bearish as markets price in lower interest rates in the next few months. Downside targets here for the, for the US dollar, you know, it is back within this range between 95 and 100. However, that's a pretty big range. So if I had to draw another area of support, I'd be at, it would be at 98. I could see the dollar potentially declining towards that level. Um, it would be quite oversold then as well, but it was an area that provided a good bit of support uh, during the rally that we experienced in early 2022.
Moving on to gold. So gold has definitely found some momentum due to dollar weakness. Uh, in the short term, the US dollar and gold tend to move inversely to one another. And that is why we are seeing this breakout higher in gold, despite the fact that this is a safe haven asset. And despite the fact that we're in a risk on environment, you should expect to see gold actually decline um, as investors rotate out of the safe haven into more riskier type sectors, such as technology or growth driven sectors, I should say. But due to the dollar weakness, we've seen gold actually break back above its 21 and 55 day exponential moving average. It also broke above this minor level, which was this 180 area, minor area of support and resistance. We saw a breakout, a bit of a retest uh, the last couple of days, and you know, uh, set to open a little bit higher here. So the next key level that I'm looking at would be at around, let's say, 184. So not too much upside uh, potential. But when it comes to gold, I do expect it to move higher or grind higher due to dollar weakness because of the inverse correlation. Um, but again, just the fact that it's it's a safe haven and we're in a risk on sentiment. I, you know, part of me thinks that the upside could be capped. Uh, will we even reach the 190s, which was a major resistance level? I'm not sure. On the weekly time frame, it does indicate, due to the bullish candle last week, that we could reach that level. But again, daily time frame, we are seeing you know price tall around this 183 area. So we'll see if it could break above 184, 185. And if it does, that would open the door towards 190. Uh, but if it doesn't, you know, we could see more neutral and choppy price action, especially if the US dollar actually starts to consolidate instead of uh, move drastically lower. Okay, taking a look at oil. So oil is quite interesting this week. A um, bit of a false breakout, maybe. Uh, the reason being is we have a key area at 74. Price did break out above it uh, due to additional supply cuts. However, we're already seeing a quick reversal lower. Now, price is retesting that 74 level today. So today's price action is going to be very important. If it breaks below 74, that, that would really mean that this was a false breakout and we could see a continuation lower. But if we see bullish price action, that would indicate a breakout, retest, and bounce, which would indicate a continuation higher. So on the short-term fundamentals, supply cuts by oil producing countries naturally is going to increase demand or increase price, I should say. Um, and that is what's causing the short term, you know, momentum in oil. However, there are concerns about Chinese, the Chinese economy, uh, very, you know, weak data that's coming out. And therefore, there are recession fears. So with Chinese, the Chinese economy being the second largest economy, um, that plays a huge part in oil prices due to, you know, the amount of demand that they that they require. And recession would indicate lower demand in oil, and therefore that is why that that's why it's a longer term headwind. The uh, you know the weak Chinese data. So oil is still going to be under pressure, but again, in terms of in the very short term, look at today's price action, see if there's a breakdown. If there is, we could see a nice opportunity to the downside. If there isn't, if there's a bounce higher, we could see a short term opportunity to the upside here. Yeah, taking a look at sector rotation, uh, we have four sectors in the improving and leading categories, and we have seven in the lagging and weakening categories. So discretionary and technology providing leadership are continuing to move to the right-hand side, indicating improving relative strength against the broader market. However, you know, the discretionary, it is losing out on a little bit of momentum, and that's not unusual to see after you know multiple weeks of providing leadership. It's still very much in a bullish tone in my opinion communications the only sector in the week in the weakening category um rotated out of the leading category a few weeks ago losing out on relative strength and momentum we have financials um rotating into the improving category and finding some momentum especially off the back of very good earnings data so we could see uh this sector uh continue to find more momentum and head towards the leading category and we also have industrials uh, rotating quite significantly from the lagging category into the improving category here. Uh, if this continues, I do expect it to see it in a leading category in a few short weeks. So industrials, a lot of infrastructure spending is still um, providing a longer term tailwind here for the sector. Energy popped up a little bit higher due to 
higher oil prices, but I'm not going to read too much into that, especially if this was a false breakout, um, like we just discussed. We could see uh, the sector continue to stall in the lagging category. And our defensive sectors in healthcare, utilities, and staples continuing to underperform as investors continue to rotate out of these defensive sectors into the likes of discretionary technology, financials, and even industrials. So moving on to um, a subsector of interest that I did sh show you last week, and that is XRT, the retail ETF. It's a part of the discretionary sector. And what we have here was a breakout of about 64. So that was the thesis for you know, last week's bullish view on XRT. And we did see a continuation higher, followed by a bit of a pullback in the last couple of days and bullish price action yesterday. And that's a very good sign for a continuation higher here. So price recovered from an overbought condition and showing bullish price action at a previous area of resistance indicates a successful retest and a potential bounce higher here for XRT. So looking for continuation higher, um, you know, you have 68 level, but you also have 72 and 74. There's plenty of upside here. And if you want to look at the weekly time frame, that 74, 75 level could be the larger upside target here for XRT. You can see that's clearly a major swing level, previous support, um, and obviously a major resistance level as well. So XRT coming back to life after you know a few months of underperformance. Okay, moving on to United Health. So this was a bearish idea that we've had for the last couple of weeks. And we were bearish when price was at around 480, around there. And we were targeting the 450 level on the weekly time frame. So price actually managed to decline right onto that level. So if you did take a trade and if you took profits at around 450, well done. Because what we saw was earnings came out and um we saw a big gap up higher. So great example of why you'd want to take profits ahead of earnings, especially when you've had a significant move in your favor. There's really no point to, um, you know, look for additional profits with such a high volatility, high uncertainty event like earnings announcements. Um, so yeah, United Health, we're obviously out of the trade, but um, good initial move and did reach our take profit zone at 450, 450 before that earnings announcement. Okay, moving on to AMD, which was a bullish idea from last week. And we're looking at AMD due to the underlying bullish trend. Plenty of momentum behind this. We're running into resistance at 130 and a bit of a pullback here to the area between the 21 and 55 day exponential moving average and also a gap fill at 110. So we're looking for you know bullish price action at this level. And so far we are getting it. Um, you know, price did reject at 122, uh, 121 level on Friday but it's not really showing signs of a reversal based on yesterday's price action. So I do expect a continuation higher for AMD. Um, this bullish thesis remains intact. 130 would be the next target level to be looking at. And from there, you know, the next key area is really 160. So if you'd want to take partial profits at 130 and let the trade run until 160, that could be, you know, a much better option. Moving on to Southern. So Southern was a bearish trade idea, but my trade structure that I proposed was a credit spread. Um, the thesis for uh, the bearish view here was because 71, 72 acting as resistance. And even though we haven't had a strong bearish move, by using a credit spread, it takes advantage of the neutral price action. It takes advantage of the time decay working in your favor. And we, you know, this would have been this would be quite profitable trade, even though price hasn't moved to that, that much lower. Now, we've had, we have talked about Southern for quite some time. So, you know, if you did take a credit spread at around that time, and if it's around 21 days to expiration or less, this is probably when you'd want to consider uh, taking profits on this trade due to the higher um, exposure to gamma. And gamma acts as a double-edged sword when you sell options or when you utilize strategies like a credit spread. So, you know, the time decay works well for us. Um, and I think after this bearish day yesterday, it makes sense to take profits on this name here. Maybe not for the maximum amount, but still, you know, a good well over 50%. Okay, taking a look at PayPal. So PayPal was a bullish idea from last week because we saw some bullish price action in this underlying bullish trend. Uh, price did... Uh, pull back towards 66, the area between the 21 and 55 day exponential moving average. 
and it actually managed to break above 72 as well in the last few days. So there is a lot of momentum here, momentum turning positive on the daily time frame. And I'm looking for a continuation higher back around towards 77, 78 area. And if it breaks above that, well, the next key level is at around 90. So plenty of upside here for PayPal. And technology stocks in general performing quite well. Moving on to BMY, which is part of the healthcare sector. So um, again, this is more of a, you know, a bearish idea that we've had for quite some time. Thesis of the bearish thesis was 66 resistance, and we've seen price react, um, you know, with bearish price action at that level. Underlying trend is bearish on the weekly time frame, and it's actually broken below that uh, 63 area here and continuing to decline back towards our ultimate price target of 60. That's our downside target. That's also a major area of support. Um, but I mean, you know, even last week, that would have been a good time to actually take partial profits on this trade. So BMY doing quite well. Um, now it's just about letting it run up until 60. I did also say a credit spread would have worked out better for this at that time. Maybe not so much now looking at how bearish it actually has been. But, you know, either way, it still makes sense to take partial profits. And uh, if you haven't already, and let the rest of the trade run, uh, move your stops to break even. So with that, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next week for another Tuesday market outlook.